Everybody. My name is Ruben Vogt and I serve as the El Paso County Judge. As County Judge, I am the presiding officer of the El Paso County Commissioner's Court, which is made up of five members, one county judge and four county commissioners. Each commissioner represents a different part of the community. I represent all of El Paso County, which spans all the way from Tornillo on the far east side to Anthony, Texas on the far west side. And today, I'm going to read to you Adelita, a Mexican Cinderella story written by Tommy de Paola. Hace mucho tiempo, a long time ago, in a village in Mexico, there lived a merchant named Francisco and his beautiful young wife, Adela. One day, Adela said, Francisco, estamos esperando un bebé. We are going to have a baby. Adela, Francisco said, me hace muy feliz saberlo. I am so happy. Then he said, we must send for Esperanza. She will come and take care of you until the baby is born. And then she will help us with the baby. Esperanza had been with the Mercado family since she was a young girl, and she had looked after Francisco when he was a baby. Esperanza came right away. She took good care of Adela. But after the birth of the baby, Adela was ill. She grew weaker, and shortly after, she held her little girl for the first and last time. Quietly, she died. Francisco was heartbroken. He named his baby daughter Adelita, little Adela, after her mother. Francisco was sad for his Adela, and he missed her greatly. But gradually, Adelita filled his heart with love. Time passed, and Adelita grew into a beautiful young woman. La Casa Mercado se llenó de alegría. The Mercado House was full of happiness. One evening, Francisco called Adelita and Esperanza to his study. My dear Adelita, my good Esperanza, les tengo noticias. I have some good news for you. I have met a charming woman, and I have decided to marry again. Her name is Señora Micaela de la Fortuna. She is a widow and has two daughters close to your age, Adelita. I know you will like Doña Micaela and her daughters, Valentina and Dulce. Adelita was happy for her father. Esperanza wasn't so sure, especially after she met Doña Micaela and her daughters. Que frías son. They're cold ones, Esperanza said. Life was happy, but different. Adelita had to share her father's attention, but they still managed to have importantes momentos juntos or special moments together. Adelita didn't mind that Doña Micaela favored her daughters, even though Esperanza complained. Es natural, it's natural, Adelita told her. Then suddenly, her father died from an illness. Everything changed. Poor Adelita was an orphan. Doña Micaela had always been jealous of Adelita. Now, she no longer had to hide it. She moved Adelita from her beautiful bedroom to a small room in the attic. No longer did Adelita have new dresses. She had to wear hand-me-downs. Worst of all, Valentina and Dulce were mean and hateful to her. Adelita began spending all her time in the kitchen with Esperanza. She helped her with the meals. She listened to stories about her father as a boy and her mother as a young bride. Because she knew that Esperanza loved her, Adelita's heart stayed as warm as the fire in the hearth. One day, Doña Micaela came to the kitchen and spoke to them. I am spending too much money in this household. From now on, you, Adelita, will work in the kitchen. You are here all the time anyway. And you, Esperanza, out. I want you to leave immediately. Oh, Señora de la Fortuna, please don't send me away, Esperanza pleaded. I have been with this family since I was a girl. I will work for no money, just a place to lay my head and a bowl of beans and a tortilla. Oh, please, Mama, Adelita begged. Esperanza can share my room and my food. Out, shouted Señora Micaela de la Fortuna to Esperanza. Then, in an icy voice, she spoke to Adelita. And don't you dare call me Mama again. I am Doña Micaela to you. She turned and left, nose in the air. 
Entre lágrimas y abrazos, amid tears and hugs, poor Esperanza said goodbye to Adelita and left with her meager belongings. Adelita was in despair. The days ahead held nothing but loneliness and hard work. Adelita had to prepare all the meals, clean the rooms, and fetch and carry for Valentina and Dulce, who became more like maldad y vinagre, meanness and vinegar. Mis hijas, my daughters, Doña Micaela said one morning as Adelita was serving breakfast. El Señor and la Señora Gordillo have sent us an invitation to una fiesta en su hacienda, a party at their ranch, to celebrate the homecoming of their son, Javier. Ooh, mamá, Valentina and Dulce twittered. And Doña Micaela said with a smile, se rumora, rumor has it, that he will be looking for a wife. The daughters nearly fainted. Secretly, each wanted to be the wife of Javier, and each would do anything to get him. Doña Micaela, Adelita asked, as she poured the hot chocolate. May I go too? I knew Señor Javier when we were young. I would love to see him again. Are you serious? Doña Micaela asked. Look at you, so poorly dressed, such a dirty face. I would be too embarrassed to have you in our company. You will stay here. Y punto, that is final. Adelita went back to the kitchen. The next days were busy. Adelita did not have a minute to herself, washing, pressing, sewing buttons on, taking lace off at the mercy of every little capricho, whim, of the sisters as they tried to outdo the other. So when Doña Micaela, Valentina, and Dulce left for the fiesta, Adelita went to the kitchen and sat by the fire. Suddenly, disappointment swept over her, and she began to weep. She missed her father. She missed Esperanza. She missed being at the fiesta. Tap, tap, tap. She heard a soft knock at the door. Who is it? Adelita asked. Soy yo, only me. And it was Esperanza. Oh, Esperanza, I have missed you so much, Adelita cried. Don't cry, mi pequeñita, my little one, Esperanza said. I am here. I had un sueño, a dream, that Doña Micaela would not let you go to the fiesta. So I have come to help. I have borrowed a cart to take you there. But I have nothing to wear, Adelita said. Come with me, Esperanza said. They went to the Carrito de Tichiles, the storeroom. Over there, behind those boxes, is your mother's trunk. The key is behind the crucifix. Adelita unlocked the trunk. Inside, she found an old-fashioned, beautiful white dress. Under the dress was a magnificent rebozo, or shawl, embroidered with birds and flowers. Oh, mi mamacita, my little mother, Adelita whispered. Adelita washed and dressed. Esperanza braided her hair and wound ribbon and flowers into it. Oh, Esperanza, Adelita said, Doña Micaela will be furious when she sees me. Don't worry, she will never recognize you, Esperanza assured. Now, vámonos, let's hurry. The fiesta had already begun when Adelita arrived. She walked into the room. Everyone turned to look. The room fell silent. Who was this stunning young woman? Señor Gordillo went up to Adelita. Who do we have here, he asked. I'm in disguise, Adelita said, with a twinkle and a sweet smile. Just call me Cenicienta, Cinderella. Javier, everyone, Señor Gordillo said. Come meet our very own Cenicienta. Javier took one look and fell in love. He danced every dance with Adelita. He brought her refreshments. He never left her side. Adelita's heart was full as well, and all the meanness she had suffered over the years began to melt. But at midnight, when Javier gave her a sweet kiss and declared his love, Adelita was frightened. How could she explain who she was? His family would never allow him to love a kitchen maid. So Adelita ran away and found Esperanza. They hurried home. I will never forget this night as long as I live, Esperanza, Adelita said. Gracias, thank you. If you ever need me, mijita, my little daughter, just call my name and somehow I will hear you, Esperanza told her. The next day, all Doña Micaela and her two daughters could talk about was the mysterious Cenicienta, who had appeared and then disappeared from the fiesta, just like the fairy tale. They were jealous of her beauty and even more jealous because they knew that Javier had fallen in love with her. 
I'm glad no one knows who she is, Valentina said. Or where she is, Dulce said. And no zapatillo de cristal, glass slipper, Doña Micaela added. Javier told everyone that he would not rest until he found his Cenicienta. He is coming to town hoy mismo, this very day, Doña Micaela announced. He will stop at each house and look for her. This is a chance to show once more what charm you have, my daughters, so prepare yourselves. Who knows, maybe one of you will make him forget this Cenicienta. Adelita, they screamed, come help us quickly. I will be right there, Adelita answered. But before she went to Valentina and Dulce, she ran to her attic room and hung her mother's rebozo out the window. She helped the two sisters dress. Then she went back to her room and shyly peeked out the window. Soon, she saw Javier coming down the street on his horse. Suddenly, he saw the rebozo. He jumped down, ran to the door, and knocked. Señora Micaela de la Fortuna opened the door. Ah, Señor Javier, pásale, por favor, come in, please, she said. Señora, where is she? I know my love is here, Javier said. Do you mean one of my daughters? Doña Micaela said. Valentina, Dulce, come here. Señor Javier would like to see you. The sisters appeared in the doorway, giggling foolishly. Buen día, good day, Señor Javier, they claimed in unison. Do you remember us? Are you looking for us? Yes, ladies, I remember you, Javier answered, but it's another that I'm looking for. There's no one else here, Doña Micaela said. Yes, there is, a voice said. Are you looking for me, senor? There was Adelita standing at the top of the stairs in her mother's dress and rebozo. My cenicenta, Javier said. Who, what, what's going on, Doña Micaela asked, while Valentina and Dulce looked at Adelita in astonishment. It's only Adelita, Doña Micaela, Adelita said as she came down the stairs. Only Adelita. Who are you? Javier asked. I am Adelita Mercado Martinez. We knew each other when we were children. Oh, Adelita, of course I remember you as a little girl, Javier gasped. I am so happy to have found you again, he smiled. I have come to ask my Cenicenta to marry me. Will you? I am an orphan, Senor Javier, Adelita said. Perhaps you should ask Doña Micaela if she will give her permission. Will you, Senora? Javier asked. Why, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what, I mean, well, of course. We shall be honored, Senor Javier, Doña Micaela said. Valentina and Dulce glared at Adelita. Then it will be, Javier said, taking Adelita's hand in his. In her sweetness, Adelita invited Doña Micaela de la Fortuna Mercado and her daughters Valentina and Dulce to the wedding. Of course, Esperanza was there too. She was going to take care of Javier and Adelita just as she had done before. And just like Cenicenta and her Príncipe, Prince, we shall live muy felices por siempre, happily ever after too, Javier said. And they did. And that's the end of Adelita by Tommy De Paola. I encourage everyone to please continue to read. Um, I enjoy reading a very good book, and it's the only way that you'll continue to um, challenge yourself, make sure that you're smart, and go out and do great things for our community. Thank you so much for letting me read to you today. Have a fantastic day.